This is gonna be tough. Train my body to do things that people like me shouldn't be able to do. But unfortunately for me, But I don't have a neuromuscular disorder. Life expectancy varies. sure i'm not muted i'm not muted oh my god i'm not muted okay thank god hey i got vince in the chat already what up vince what song is that oh i don't know the name i gotta i gotta like copy and paste it because it's like a japanese song i'll give it to you remind me on discord and i'll give it i'll give it to you how's everyone doing it's me little movie perp it says per oh shit i gotta change that i'm gonna get memed on okay all right so what are we doing today well we're waiting waiting for what I don't know for something to happen until then i was like let me just uh let me just talk about movies and shit let me lock some stuff stuff in my youtube channel so what are we talking about well you saw the thumbnail the road to a24 horror horror i gotta work on that word horror the road to a24 horror all right Obviously, A24 is really hot right now with their horror films. We got Hereditary. We got Midsummer, We got Lighthouse. The Witch, I think, was... Let me check the movies. We got a bunch of shit. This year alone, we have... Um, I saw the TV glow. You know? So, like, they uh, they did the Gretel and... Did they, no, that was MGM. Oh, my God. That was Orion. I was wrong. Okay. Never mind. Um, but A24 is very popular. They have, like, their brand of horror films. <clears throat> um you know the the people people different have different names for it they call it like elevated horror or stuff like that and mostly attributed to a24 and now it's like such a brand now that like um you sort of see other studios copy that model you know from the marketing is like oh that feels like a little little hereditary like stuff like that it's it's its own brand right so what is the makings of a24 horror right what 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 is that special brand i just mentioned okay so i think it's it's not that's the thing though i think that it is a type of because now i have to think of what how, how am i going to bridge this to larry facetton what br what brand of a24 i don't want to say because i think it's a type of um more atmospheric more story social commentary i think there's there's still like killings and stuff but it, there it doesn't come from like a cynical place it seems like their style is like this uh type of artistic intent with horror if you will and i think that's always been in horror and sometimes it catches on to mainstream sure i think something like hellraiser you know um, and sometimes it's, uh, it's sort of, uh, underground, right? Underground, independent. A24 says Anthony the Cheeseman. A24 is really hit or miss when it comes to horror, in my opinion, especially after Beauty Afraid and Love Lies Bleeding. Um, sure. I think Love Lies Bleeding is branching off from horror. It could be sort of horror adjacent, you know, and it has horror imagery. I'm glad you're putting it in horror. I haven't seen Bew is Afraid. That that runtime scares the shit out of me. I gotta be very committed. All right. We had it, we spent like when I did the freaking Scorsese movie, it was like a day. It felt like a day. Like yeah, we had to plan 
We had to plan like the day around it. That was the day. Yeah, it was the day. We saw the Scorsese movie. That's my day. All right. What? Didn't we do an intermission and walk the dog? Yeah, we yeah. We did an intermission for Christ's sake. We walked the dog, okay? That's a day. All right. I enjoy the stuff they do outside of horror. Okay, name them. I don't even know. I don't even know. I only know their horror stuff. Seems like they're branching off. And a lot of the times they do mix the genres. Like, I think uh, I saw the TV Glow, this new one, is horror adjacent. I wouldn't call it straight horror. I probably wouldn't even. Like, what do you even call that? What? What would you call I saw the TV Glow? Is that like it's horror adjacent? Yeah, it's horror adjacent. Like, how would you pitch that to a friend? I Watch mean, this horror movie? It like, just reminds me of like the, the shit that I read that I just call it weird fiction. Weird fiction sounds like a, that's beautiful. Okay, we're going to use that. Branching off to weird fiction. Yeah, I like that. I would I would want to see that in movies if that's what it is. Like stuff that's not exactly of the norm. Of the norm. All right. Is anyone here? Oh, I got four viewers. Cool, cool, cool. Hey guys. Hannibal? Um let me uh let me see what we're talking about. So this like type of, I guess, artsy fartsy type of horror films. I don't want to sound like the old head, but I was like, okay. I I was into this shit before. Before I was mainstream. Okay? I'm the hipster now. Look at me. I'm the hipster now. Okay? And it was all thanks to this guy. By the name of Larry Fessenden, or Fessenden. I, I still don't even know. It's been decades. I still don't know how to pronounce his name. I don't know which way it goes. Larry F. L Larry F. Good old Larry F. Yeah. Best friend. Best cinema friend. Uh, he was a director I was absolutely obsessed with in high school and college. And he did very character-driven indie horror films. All right? So... How did I get to know him? This is why I like awards and critics. So Fangoria gave a, a list of upcoming, like, fresh filmmakers you need to know about. And one of them was Larry. Me being a horror fan, I decided I wanted to see the movie they mentioned. What was that movie? Let me, I'm pulling it up now. Relax. I'm pu pulling it up. Relax. Everyone's so tense. Relax. We're here to learn about film. Talk about film. Be given suggestions to film. This movie called Habit. Spicy vampire movie. Spicy vampire movie. All right. This is a fantastic, fantastic vampire movie. Okay. It's about this drunk guy. In New York City, his dad just died, right? So he's already, he's having a bad one. And he meets this girl at a party, at a Halloween party. And, like, she's obviously, like, way better than him. But she has interest in him. And she's kind of mysterious. And he digs that. And he's, like, a huge drunk, by the way. I can't stress enough what a drunk he is. So they start hooking up. And while they're hooking up, she starts to, like, bite him. And at first, he's, like, whatever, whatever. And she's, like, in... He thinks, she's pretty sure that she's drinking blood or whatever. He thinks it's a kink thing. New York art scene is where this takes place. So this guy's like, okay, whatever. Um, little by little, in the movie, he starts becoming paranoid. Starts thinking, oh shit, this girl's a vampire. So obvious, very, it's coming at it from a very psychological level. This girl happens to be drinking my shit. I little by little, I think she's a vampire. Now. What makes this special? I will spoil it for you because I know none of you fucks will ever see this thing, okay? She is a vampire, bro. It's not one of those, it's in his head and he's, he's, he's going to stake her and it's just going to be real human. No, no. She's a fucking vampire for sure. So I love the, the beautiful psychological play is well done and great, but it's also hinted at throughout, yo, this lady's really a vampire. So it's like, that's in there. That's baked in the story, okay? <clears throat> that's baked in the plot points, you know? 
one of the things that makes this this movie so elegant is the realism okay i'm talking like this is like that new york indie like it, uh, handheld people just talking over each other like it uh, dialogue feels improvised but it's still fucking amazing and, and not only that he did this movie as a college short i think or maybe it might have been a whole full film he did this as a college film and I saw like uh, he does like he does like uses like he, he there's this monologue in this middle of the movie where he's explaining to his friend why he thinks this girl's a vampire. And dude, it's like line for line. It's like this dude had this like idea. And that's that's when I also thought I was like, damn, dude, like this is written when it feels so improvised. It feels so fresh and real. Um, It is a very spicy movie because that is part like the sex is needed for this movie because that's part of. That's part of like the, the the overall plot points and and story, right? I think it's baked in there, uh, extremely uh, appropriate for its content, right? And the director Larry Fassetten is the star of this movie. Okay, now before you guys start saying, "Oh, he just wanted to be with this hot girl this whole time," blah blah blah. blah. No, no, no. He is very. He shows himself very vulnerable in this movie. Uh, to a degree, uh, he shows he bears bears it all by himself doing some crazy trippy dream sequences, right? So this guy, like, he's he is motivated to make art, all right. This Larry Facetting guy, all right. And the vamp the the vampirism aspect, as it starts coming into play, when we the audience start to believe him, and that's what's interesting. We don't we don't know we don't really believe that she's a vampire. The audience. This is this, this is a movie. We start to think second guessing ourselves like, oh, is this about a drunk that thinks this girl's a vampire? Like, that's the beauty of this movie. So we join him. We believe him at one point. Uh, and then shit gets nuts. All right. And that's where really, really clever editing, uh, suspenseful, I won't say action, but suspenseful cat and mouse scenes happen in the third act. There's um there's a actually a very like I would even call it breathtaking like if you have vertigo oh shit whoa okay there's several scenes actually several scenes of vertigo being displayed like height being a threat like where you're like really like almost Tom Cruise level shit except but more so because you know this guy when he's hanging off a building doesn't have the support system and resources that Tom Cruise has this guy, like when you see the 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 freaking quality of this movie, you're gonna be like, damn, dude, did this dude like is this a film? Like, and, and and it's in the 90s, so you're not gonna get that digital fucking, you know, is this an adult film? No, it, it's film. It seems like it's 16, super 16. So you get that grainy, awesome feeling too. Um really great movie. Really great movie. Uh I think it's probably my favorite of his. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. I think I gave it five stars. Yeah, it's it's a perfect movie for me. It's the perfect vampire movie. Larry Fassetten got in my radar, like, to his detriment, some would say. I don't. Uh, with a movie too good. Too good. Like, it's not going to get better than this. You should never start off with the best movie of the guy. And make no mistake, this is my favorite movie of his, right? Really, dog. Really, dog? Chili, dog? All right. So after this movie, obviously this movie blew me away. He's in my radar. I find out he's doing, a, 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 like, it takes him a fucking while to make another movie, dude. A long while. It wasn't until, like, 2002. Okay, 2001 here. He did Wendigo. All right? Wendigo is a super interesting, once again, grounded realistic about character interactions starring jake weber and i think it's in our cat not a, not no it's not in our cat the woman from the woods i gotta look her up now god damn it All right. patricia clarkson that's why i thought it was i was thinking patricia or cat everyone knows patricia clarkson she's great okay yeah, she's in dogville oh yeah she's the one freaking uh Tossing over all the, <laughs> she had all those toys. Uh, I mean, those thing, whatever. I don't care. I don't care. Okay. So 
Wendigo, obviously, you see, I, I'm not the biggest fan. I think it's a very interesting movie. I think there's some phenomenal parts in, in, in it. I wanted it to go further. It kind of does a very similar trick to habit in terms of realism, what's real, what's not, um, and then going balls to the wall, supernatural in the third act. And that's where the similarities end, all right? But this movie does have some amazing, amazing uh, acting, interaction, and filmmaking, I will say. Especially involving a kid in a horror film. Uh, those could be very detrimental to your horror film. This kid from Malcolm in the Middle, it's one of the, it's the little brother from Malcolm in the Middle. I haven't watched the show, but that's what everyone says. Uh, he's, he's good in this, right? They use him well. At least very natural when he's with the dad specifically. There's some great scenes with him. Uh, and again, this is a this is about acting. This is about uh, character work. And I think it's it's like too good, right? It's like too good of a drama, and it kind of loses the supernatural focus or the supernatural atmosphere that was that permeated throughout Habit. It loses it here because it was being too involved with this fucking family in their holiday, and their fucking neighbor. Now, how this starts off is incredible, is when I'm talking about the filmmaking, okay? The filmmaking in this is great. So, it's the family, shit happens in the first five minutes. So, you're going to be, like, it's, it, it's actually very, the first, like, 10 minutes, 20 minutes is incredibly engaging. A family runs over a deer, okay? And then this deer was being chased by the hunters. So this family takes out a deer that these hunters were were going for that apparently they've been tracking for, for days, okay? So these hunters are kind of mad at this suburban family. And it's coming across first kind of passive except for one guy. One guy is like not even saying anything. And it's like the dad dealing. Now, keep in mind, keep in mind, they have a son that's Malcolm. He's like uh, seven or eight, right? So it's like the dad dealing with, oh, shit. Making sure the family's okay. Son just saw the deer get killed. And now he has to deal with these hunters, right? It's just phenomenal filmmaking all around, okay? Because what he, what Larry Fassetten does is he focuses, he sort of uses the perspective of the kid when all this is going down. How the dad is being demasculated, all this shit uh, is, is happening through the kid's perspective. So in many ways... This thing starts off like, holy shit, Larry Fassetten is 100% a talent to, to watch, okay? Then, in my opinion, the movie, after that phenomenal opening sequence and setting things up, and it's a good, it's a chunky sequence. It's not like I'm asking you guys to watch five minutes and then, like, it's a, it's like, it starts things off, like, awesome. It's, it's explored, like, this, the, the, the hunters talking to the dad. Um, man, it was, it was really cool. It was really cool. And it's even solved in an interesting way. Um, you know, because the hunters are getting very agitated with this with this dad trying to take care of the son. And it's like, hey, you killed this buck. Like, they're trying to maybe get some money off of it. Like, it's awesome. It's really cool. Um, then the, the family just goes to their vacation home. And the movie is just a family, kind of a domestic drama. You, know, you get to see them play cards. You get to... Da, 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 da. What what's up, Crazy Joe? I'm doing your favorite. Uh, I'm doing a, a the road to A24. Your favorite type of uh, favorite comp your favorite studio or distribution company. I don't know what they are. They're like a mix of everything, though. Should I do it? Should I put the link in the chat? I'm gonna be talking about my boy Larry, though. This guy's very important to me. I wanted to log this guy. Wanted to log this guy on my YouTube channel, but anyone could come in officially. Crazy Joe wants in. Uh, oh, Vince wants in. Probably wants in too. Yeah. Shutter is my favorite after last night. Their streaming site. They're not doing the Shutter Awards this year. It's very disappointing. I'm looking forward to that. What's up, buddy? Yo. Don't even talk about it. Can you hold off on last night with the devil? I'm seeing it on Tuesday. Hold off on it. On the All top, right. On yeah, the you're, in, you're in for a treat, though. It's, it's no, my, I loved it, man. I, I, I just loved it. Crazy Joe says he loved last night. He said he absolutely loved it. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. We're super hyped. We got tickets. 
Very weird. It, it, it's probably so, you know the year is short. I mean, it's only been three months, but it's my favorite movie I've seen this year so far. I think we're gonna have a great year, so that's awesome. That's all that says to me when you said, "Oh, it's already like oh, made like that good in month three. We're gonna have and, a banger year, Joe." And, and it was a packed theater. It was a packed theater, and everybody was into it. Like like the people next to me. I mean, there there was the jerk uh, on his phone kept tweeting at someone. I can't, I don't believe, know. I can't believe but, that shit. I can't believe but, that still happens. Don't you guys know you're a meme? My lord. But still, uh, it was like even so. I think uh, this I, might this might bring that actor Polka Dot Man to A plus status. Like oh no, no, I I said that to, to my wife today. I yeah. said you know, I don't know how you pronounce his last name. Is it da Dashmalian? Is that it? I, da I David no Dashmalian. Idea. I don't know. I said, you know, we're gonna know guy, his name after this one. Yeah. I said he's been in so many things and he's always good, but he's one of those guys nobody really talks about. I said he's a damn good actor and he's a guy yeah. we got to keep our eye on. He's like one of one of those actors out there who's always good. Whatever he's in, he's always good. Yeah, he's always interesting too. Yeah, he does interesting stuff with his characters. He was the uh, he was the host of last last year's Shutter Awards. Was it? I didn't know there were Shutter Awards. Yeah, at Fangoria Shutter. We did a whole reaction over here. It was oh, awesome. I, I was looking forward to it this year. There's a lot of good horror movies. I remember. Do you remember back in the day the Horror <laughs> Hall of Fame? They used to. It was a syndicated show. Would come on. It was about two hour long, like sort of an award ceremony. I think it might have been promoted by Fangoria Magazine. Maybe. Maybe. maybe that's not yeah, true, Fangoria but... jumps from awards to awards. It's freaking crazy. They did. Uh, they they Fangoria was doing Shutter shit. Hmm. It was crazy. It's like, what are they jumping around? I remember like Robert England <clears throat> used to host them. It was like back in the late eighties, early nineties. Yeah. They did about four or five of them. Are, no, there was also teams. there was also a big one too. There was there was like a crowd where they had a crowd, right? Like recently, I don't know. They're all over the place. I don't know. I don't remember. They're all over the place. I'm talking about Larry Fassetten, huge indie, uh, huge indie horror filmmaker that uh, I fell in love with. He does really interesting. Uh, some would say artsy fartsy. I remember when Fourth Wendigo Fourth. was in theaters. I never saw it, but I do remember back when it was. In oh, you theaters. saw this? Oh, oh, this made it to limited theaters over there. Oh yeah, I I didn't see it, but I do remember when it was out playing. Uh, yeah. It started. It didn't start like the little kid from Malcolm in the Middle. Exactly. Not, yeah, Malcolm yeah, yeah. Brother. Yeah. Holy shit! Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty good. Like it's very frustrating because there's a lot of like amazing scenes in this, but there's like some. It's really bogged down with a, a second act, a middle that's just like, oh my god, it takes forever to get going again. But like, it starts off amazing, and ends pretty interesting and good. It's just that middle section is like, fuck. But yeah, this guy. Uh, I just finished talking about how I was introduced with him in this amazing vampire movie called um, Habit. That's like, still to this day, it's probably my favorite vampire movie of all time. I'm looking him up now. I don't know if I've seen any of his movies. He did wow. um he did like a thing of ABC of death. Uh wow. I'm gonna jump he, now. He has a massive forehead. Yeah. I he's wonder been all he's also an actor and producer, and I would say you guys probably definitely seen movies he produced. He was in Flower yeah. Killers of the Flower Moon. Yeah, he was, and he was in Bringing Out the Dead with uh Scorsese. He's a new like I'm sure Scorsese like heard about this guy. Scorsese's a New York guy, right? This guy was like the king of indie horror in New York, right? in the in the the mid mid 90s because of habit and also it started off great because um he his first movie which i didn't see i saw habit first which i again another masterpiece i gave it five stars no telling the frankenstein complex basically a, a retelling of frankenstein done through this animal cruelty you know sjw sort of perspective <laughs> in the early 90s it is phenomenal man i was disturbed by this one I, and I liked it. And like, once again, what makes this one, every movie, he kind of has like this, something that he does interesting. He does the sort of domestic drama. This one involves like three, uh, sort of a love triangle involved in this. <clears throat> but he films the whole thing like Evil Dead. Like he's doing mm -hmm. fucking crazy ass camera moves, all this shit. Like even during the, the, the like this de dinner debate where like the camera's whipping back and forth like while this these this people are having this debate it's just wild fucking filmmaking it it's also like again i think this is probably his most disturbing movie i was generally like oh man with the end how the the so-called frankenstein monsters reveal is actually <laughs> pathetic and sad and just made me think of things differently 
uh, in, in terms of the whole movie and what it was trying to say, it was really cool. Really cool movie. I love it. I love this movie. So I saw this after Wendigo. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, that's when I knew, okay, this guy's like the real deal. This guy's the real deal. But it was confirmed. It was confirmed for sure is like when he started producing shit. So this guy's responsible for like several filmmakers we probably heard of. Ty West, uh, Adam Wingard, I'd say. Maybe he's connected to Adam Wingard. Oh, yeah, there's Adam Wingard's. Uh, no, that's Ty West's uh, House of the Devil he produced. He also produced this amazing, amazing drama called Wendy and Lucy. This came out of nowhere. I only saw this because it was like on in like Criterion or some shit. And I was like, what is this? And, I, and Larry produced it. I was like, what the fuck? In Criterion Collection? And I saw it, and it's a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful, beautiful, sad little movie. Uh, Wendy and Lucy, about a girl that loses her dog. Very simple story. Mm. Okay. Uh, he produced that. Uh, he did Stakeland. I don't know if you did you see that one? I was just it's funny you should mention it. I was just on IMDB looking at his resume and I recognized the name Stakeland and I honestly thought wasn't that the direct to video vampire movie that yeah. starred Todd Bridges from Different Strokes? Then I looked it up and it, it was not. I was thinking of something else. No, this one started Connor Powell. Do you remember that? Like back in the early 2000s, Todd Bridges starred in like a direct to video vampire movie. And everybody was like, hey, Todd Bridges did a vampire movie. No. What was it called? <laughs> I don't know. It should have been called What You Talking About, Willis. Everyone would have been it. Then. it when, when you go, Stop I paid to see that. No, you'd have my money. You, you say, I'm making a vampire movie. It's called What You Talking About, Willis. And it stars Todd Bridges. Sold. Go ahead, take my money. Yeah. I'm now, there. what's really cool about Larry Fassetten is that. I think his most successful thing is actually a video game. <laughs> What's the video game? I Until I Dawn. I would be very disappointed if I found out this guy didn't have telepathy. Because <laughs> because look at his... He's got that big cranium and he's got that look in his eye. That's he's like, also I'm making, missing a tooth. He's like, I'm lifting like has, one he eyebrow. Has a he, has a, he has a look. I think that image has a look, though. Okay. In that image there, he's got like one eyebrow lifted like he's concentrating to lift something. This is a hero, Joe. Settle okay. down. All right. All right. I'm just right. saying. I'm just saying. Now, did you notice something? I said he did a vampire movie, right? Now, yes, fact, now what's really cool about this vampire movie? It's oh, actually, I have it. Is, is Stakeland a vampire movie? Huh? Is Stakeland also a vampire movie? Correct. Okay. Okay. But that's an apocalyptic vampire movie where like kind of different you know this is more very again very grounded very uh almost feels like an indie movie you know handheld shaky cam shit when the people are talking um but it's also modeled like if, if you think about it there's a lot of uh references to the dracula uh, plot points like the, the actual bram stoker stoker things on how this lady weaves into his life it's actually very reminiscent to dracula only they change sex um, so he did this vampire run and you notice, I said he did his Frankenstein run. Uh -huh. Okay. So this one, Wendigo is about like, uh, you know, native American folklore involved, you know, but I always wondered, is this dude ever going to do a werewolf movie? Cause that'd be amazing. He did the vampire, the Frankenstein. He's sort of recreating modern versions of, uh, of these classical stories, right. you know? And people aren't really uh, notice habit is harder to notice, but obviously no telling is like it's literally called the Frankenstein complex. Okay, so it came out recently. Uh, still waiting to where it could stream. That he just completed last year a werewolf movie called Blackout. Oh, okay, so he has his werewolf movie ready to go, and it's getting pretty good reviews. It's already playing some festivals, so. He might be back because I've seen a couple of his other movies. I'll get to those now. Where where is is Habit streaming? Can I could I watch Habit? Uh, Habit is streaming. That is on Shutter, buddy. Oh, Your favorite new streaming site. Yeah, well, I've been a Shutter subscriber for a while, but uh, they're killing. I, I love, yeah, I, you know the because because they that's what do you call it? Um, Late Night with the Devil. That's a Shutter movie. Yeah, but they put it, they put it in theaters, and what a good business model! They made money in the theaters, and believe me, they made money. That that theater was packed. Yeah, we're going Tuesday. They're going to make money. Yeah, 
And uh, now it's going to that's going to go to Shutter, and uh, that's that's a good str- a good model. That's Dude, a good I think that, I think they're everyone's going to do the October model now. Remember that worked in October for yeah. several movies. Yeah, I think that's going to go for every horror movie everywhere, and it'll work. Why not? Did you like the Shutter Christmas movie? What was it called? It's a Wonderful Knife. Um, man, I saw that directly after Totally Killer, and. It just didn't. It didn't hit. It didn't have impact for me. I thought it, the it first half I was kind of going with it, but little by little it was like losing me. Like I, I didn't. I didn't really. I wasn't yeah, in love I, with it. it, it but I, Justin Long was good. I didn't like, see it. Like I, I wasn't the same with me. I didn't see Totally Killer first. In fact, I think I saw It's a Wonderful Night first. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I didn't really care for it. Yeah, I loved. I loved It's a Wonderful Knife, but you mean you love Totally Killer? I, oh yeah, no, yeah, that's it. I love Totally Killer. Totally Killer was was just God. That was fantastic. I wish I'd seen that in a movie theater, and I think it did. I think it played in theaters for like a week. It was one of those things where Totally it was like, Killer exactly played out. in the theater. I don't think I, so. I, I saw think, it like I think it was playing at my local theater. Maybe I'm wrong. I think it was playing at my local theater before but I think a release. Was, or the, the, uh, the, let the, me let me. I saw it on the day. I think. Because I seem to remember going to another movie, and it was playing, and I saw the poster and said, what the hell is that? And, of course, I didn't go see it. And then when I found out what it was, it wasn't playing anymore. Uh, no, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm mixing it up yeah. with something else. Because it yeah. says it played I don't think that played, yeah. Fest, Amazon don't played. play that game, Joe. They do, though, sometimes. When? They do. Um, uh, what do you call it? Um Jeez, I'm blanking. Uh, the, the, Bro, the that Camille... zombie shit at the end, Cheeseman, you got to admit that was weird. Like how the, the mind control, like that was just too much for me. It was like, it wasn't, it didn't, Totally Killer had like this dumb, goofy vibe the whole time. It's like even the way the freaking time machine worked and Totally Killer looked like a freaking Nickelodeon thing. There was like a goofy uh, aloofness to it. Knife, like, it seemed like it really wanted to be a horror film at times. And then it didn't play with the goofiness enough to have like this very weird, the whole town's taken over, mind controlled. Like that was so fucking, oh, By the was, way, uh, but I'm glad you thought it was decent, actually. I'm glad, was, like, because the, the first half is pretty good. You know? It was Kumail Nanjiani's uh, movie, um, The Big Sick. That was a um, an Amazon exclusive, but it went to theaters first. Dude, uh, that was so long ago. That's not, the, that, that but was that's so not, that's ago. not the only one. Okay, Air, okay. Air, the, the sneaker movie. Uh, in fact, it didn't do so hot in theaters, and Amazon came out and said, no, we knew it wasn't going to do that well in theaters. That was never the game plan. The game plan was to boost its profile so that when it came to Amazon, people would have heard of it. Uh, and, and part of the controversy with um, Roadhouse is that they had committed to put like a certain number of movies in theaters per year. They had actually come out and said, we're going to put, I forget what it was, X number of movies in theaters per year, and they've been falling short of that. And it's part of the reason a lot of people were upset that Roadhouse didn't get the theaters because they're well, we we told him it would go direct to streaming. It's like okay, yeah, you did, but you also have put very few movies in theaters this year after making a commitment to do a certain number, and you have, you've fallen short of that. So there was no reason. Did you especially... see, did you see Roadhouse? No, I haven't seen it. Are you you're oh that's right you're you're not interested. Yeah, I, I have very little interest. Yeah, don't say boycott. That sounds stupid. Say I'm not no. interested. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it was really good, man. It's a lot of fun. It's really weird, weird tone, but I like that. Kind of tone deaf. I'm kind of tone deaf with my movies. All right, let's go back to his directing thing because he he makes very even like okay. So the last movie I've oh, seen I love from the him. Gulag. Do you watch? He did the Gulags. I watched the Gulag. Which one? Uh, Return of the Gulag. You ever see the Gulags? No. There, you know, the Christmas time they do the Yule log, and it's just a. Oh fireplace. yeah, he did. He directed this. No, I've never oh, seen this. Yeah, no, the Gulags are Shutter's version of the Yule log, and all it is is like a jack o' lantern. It's like it's like a Halloween. Like if you want to put like Aww. something for atmosphere on, it'll be like a, a porch. Sixty like minutes. A, 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 yeah, it's they're they're fun. I put them. Oh, on so this. he directed one. That's yeah. Fun. I just put yeah, them. Yeah, he, he loves nuts. horror. He cares about horror. He's really yeah. he's a valuable. Like underrated, like like commodity to the horror community, man. This is because of this guy. We have like freaking Adam Wingard and Ty West, and so right, like A twenty four. That's why I'm like saying the road to any to A twenty four. I think for me personally, and I'm down to learn 
other other filmmakers but to me it started with this guy it's from the 90s i'm sure there's other filmmakers down. In the 80s. i'm writing them down because i have to i have to check out some of his stuff now well so do a habit and no telling um and then because all right his next one is probably his most controversial because of the ending but it's a phenomenal movie can i is this it oh yeah 2006 uh the last winter oh man man when you talk about a movie that dropped the ball with the very last three minutes, like the whole, like, holy shit, did people not like this last three minutes to the detriment of them where they're writing this movie off because the movie is fantastic. Like, this is a really great movie. He finally got a cast to work with, by the way, like in terms of names to get out there, including Ron Perlman, Love James Legros, Connie Britton, I guess just Ron Perlman. But uh, it also got pushed by um, – he didn't produce it, but I, I know he was, like, promoting it, and they even had, like, you know, in the trailer or whatever, they would have his uh, – Guillermo del Toro, he had, like, a quote saying how important Larry Fasedin is to the horror community, right, uh, and to try to support this movie, uh, The Last Winter. Let me see if I could just play the trailer. Because this is, is probably his most, like – Again, he's an indie guy, so his stuff is really rough around the edges. This is probably his like slickest movie. And even then, it's not like it's like super medium budget. I can't even get a freaking really cool concept with this one. Again, if you ignore the last three minutes, this movie's a masterpiece. I see a sin out here. It's pure white nothingness. Yeah, a lot of his movies, a lot of his movies carry social commentary, like heavy, heavy social commentary or um, maybe not even social. I guess. Yeah, it could be social. Big party. You know? Oh, my God. This is so rough. <laughs> it's a good movie. It's like these guys in this uh, Alaskan station, right, where they have like this big box that's that supposedly has oil in it, like this pump that they put this box. So they make this, they have this ominous image of this black box in the middle of like this just white snow that's covered like endless, endless white snow and just this big black box in the middle of it. It's just really cool, creepy imagery. We need to talk, you and me. We don't need the others. I'm not going to sign something just because you need me. This is a terrible trailer. I'm going to find a better trailer. Sorry, guys. There has to be a better trailer. Is it? I'm not going to sign something? That's your plot point in your trailer, bro? I'm not going <laughs> to sign something. Watch, that's the only trailer. It's like, no wonder this shit can make any money. Yeah, there's an IFC one. No! James Hoffman? They do the same shit. How you doing? I'm not going to sign something. Work for North. You're not the type. You work for the American people. What the American people want is energy independence. Temperature's been all over the place. Well, my only concern is getting my equipment in. Tundra's barely frozen. Maybe you're going to have to reconsider your plans. That's the wrong answer. There's a fierceness in the wind I've never felt before. Something is being unleashed. Habit! Today. It's coming out from the ground. It's haunted. Yeah, the oil is haunted. That is such a cool idea. If you think about it, what oil is, it's like, oh yeah. And it's like creating this new thing. It's like, oh, it's such a cool concept. Today. It's coming out from the ground. It's haunted. I want to show you. I'm further out now. Listen, listen. Did you hear what he was saying? Get out of my way. I'm telling you, there's something out there that's trying to drive us out of here. You see it? I need evidence. There's a corpse outside. That's evidence of something. We're not leaving the station. It's not safe. I'm in charge here! Why wouldn't the wilderness fight us? Like any organism would fend off a virus. Open your eyes!
Yeah, really cool movie. Really cool movie. The last three minutes are such. It's 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 very. It's sad. The look. Connie, of, Connie sorry. Britton's an underrated actress. She's always good. Oh, you know who that was? Oh yeah, yeah. She's she's been in a lot, but she's. You know, I yeah, I think most people first came came upon her on the sitcom uh, Spin City. Mm -hmm. So she could do oh. comedy. She was on a, a sitcom, but she's not just a comedic actress. She's 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 a really underrated actress because she she can do drama. She can do comedy. She's she's very always good. Yeah, yeah. I definitely recommend this for people that like the thing. Although it's not really, it doesn't. It has atmosphere, but it's not like it's not as as pressing as the thing. I guess just the setting, but uh, the way it dives into like these two factions of what they're trying to do out there, these group trying to get oil. It's it's really cool. I really enjoyed it. Uh, and it's probably his most quote unquote mainstream movie. He's done some other ones. Oh yeah, he did. Okay, so he's a big fan of Jaws, so he wanted to do a fish movie. He just he just said he wanted to do a fish movie, and he did this movie called Beneath. It's, it's again. Oh, hey, senior nerd. Hey, right up, buddy. Hello. How you doing? Fine. You care about Larry Fassett in an independent horror cinema that led to A24? I guess. Or might have. I don't know. At least interest. What? Yeah, I guess. There you go. All right. Cool. All right. So he did this fish movie called Beneath. The fish is, it's like a fish. It's not like a gator or a shark. It's like a literal like fish. He did a fish. And it's about these kids. They're stuck in one boat, right? And it's just they're dealing with this fish, this killer fish, right? And so, again, the monster stuff isn't as good as his when he did the other movies. Like, it's not as um exciting or feeling as dangerous as Habit. It's not as wild and, I guess, like, weird and windigo and it doesn't have the budget of the last winter right but what this does have is still pretty interesting character work so it's like these guys these kids are stuck in this boat and then they start turning on each other so it's not just them like dealing with this fish like it starts like they start like messing with each other uh like fucking each other over, throwing each other over. Like you, they start like needing a voting system of who's going to go, you know, which becomes more of a cycle like that within itself is pretty horrifying. You know, it's like the whole boat, like this little boat and everyone turned against you. You got to go, you got to go no matter what. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. So that part is really interesting. And I'd say it's worth watching. It's just like the fish horror action stuff is just like, you could just, it's super, super rough, super rough. So, I probably don't recommend this one uh, unless you want to see teenagers fuck each other over. Then it's a hilarious good time. Uh -huh. You know, if you're into like that slasher shit. That sounds like a good time. Funny deaths. But yeah, that's that's my that's my man Larry. Uh, he's di he did another one recently I haven't seen. But I'm going to keep tabs and I'm definitely going to do a big review when he does when I see Blackout. I don't know when it's going to be available. It's getting good reviews, so I'm happy. Uh, it did festivals last year. I don't know. I think I heard someone bought it, so it's gonna get distributed uh, distributed soon. And then he did this movie called Depraved, which I heard is another kind of Frankensteinish shit, but dealing with a a dead soldier in from combat or something. Yeah, Middle East PTSD. Yeah, whatever. Um, I heard it's kind of Frankensteinish, so I, and I heard it wasn't. Oh, never mind. Okay, I'm gonna see it. Yeah, because it's now I gotta I gotta remember who I'm hearing from <laughs> nowadays of what's good, what's not. It's not the same. It's not the same. All right. Yeah, I gotta see his other movies. But that that's my boy Larry. <laughs> I love his movies. And you might recognize him. Again, he was just in a the Scorsese movie. He was at the end. He was the dude. He was one of the announcers. He was one of the announcers at the end of um Killers of the Flower Moon. I'm going to check out several of his films, starting with uh, Habit. Yeah, try to see how. If you're not into that one, don't bother with the other one. But I'm telling you, it's very rough around the edges, and it's 
indie, but the acting is phenomenal. He actually acts in the movie. And you're going to see how he's missing a tooth. Like it's quite a, quite a character that Larry. He's the star of. Oh, yes. So what, what else, what else is new guys? Anything? Any know. news? Any, whatever, nothing. Nothing. Excited for Harold, of course. Who is it? Oh, dear. oh did uh, Harold became number one on uh, to the max last night? Yeah, it did. The critic. It was an uh, audience choice. I I was actually uh, I was actually a little annoyed last night. Wait, because... hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got to get something out of the way. Did you say? Mm -hmm. Did you accuse? As a, even as a joke, Max of being anti-Semitic. Well, I didn't necessarily mean Max, but there has been a rise. You meant the panel? Well, no, there's been a rise of a, a kind of disturbing trend of some anti-Semitism going on on these panels. Like we've been having no, you weren't guy, joking. No, we, we had a guy who's been showing up in the chat and he's been taking on names like Crazy Jew Adventures and he's been saying all kinds of uh, and, and there's just been this thing happening lately, and I don't know where it's bubbling up from. It's a little disturbing. And then we've had people going on about Gal Gadot saying, oh, Gal Gadot's canceled because she supports Israel. And it's just it's just been a little weird lately. And I've been like, I'm like, well, I'm not I, I can't quite put my finger on it. But I'm like, is something going on? Like, what? what is it? It's a little weird. But did you ask Max that? I think I was it asking like I was dead. Oh. I, yeah, I was kind of asking. I think in people general. got confused and thought you were talking to Max specifically. No, no, I was putting it out there in general because there's been a lot of it going on. Like I, I've uh, banned a guy about three or four times from the chat who's been saying anti-Semitic comments. It's it's been very weird sure. lately. Uh, I don't yeah. know where it's coming from. Yeah, yeah, you probably shouldn't have left right after you said that to clarify because some people thought you were saying that to Max. Oh well, I I told um I told Max I was probably going to leave. I said you know number one I wasn't feeling well and number two I was yeah that's what I said. That, yeah, I swear to God, movie. these people come up with so, yeah. All right. Are you saying like saying Levi's Jewish? He's not Jewish. Well, yeah, how that... Le Levi sounds Jewish. Oh God. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. Cancel. So next to Wikipedia answers about that. Yeah, he's he, he was he's Christian. He's he's oh. he's doing the, he does this uh uh faith based movie like the one where he's I forgot his name, but um no, he said nefarious. He, said Jewish. he wasn't in nefarious. Remember, he um he's he's mentioned that his name because he sounds Jewish. He couldn't get roles early on. Yeah, he he stars in oh. a, he's in a bunch of movies. He was in Ty West's first movie, Trigger Man. I like him. I'm a big fan. Uh, I I loved uh, Chuck, the show Chuck. Um, one of my favorite shows. Oh, are you talking about uh, Zachary Levi, Sean? Or yeah. Are you talking about Larry? Who's Larry? Larry Fassett and the guy we've been. Oh my God, you're in the stream, dedicated to the man. No, no, because <laughs> who's Larry? I mean, Zachary Levi was even a guest on so my channel. I've been going to bat for you. Okay. He, he was even a guest on my channel once. Mm. I had him on uh, Zachary Levi. I've had oh, wow. I've, he's he's been on with me as a guest. No wonder you love him. No, I mean I, I've I've loved him yeah, since Larry. Chuck. See, he's I was not talking huge... about Zachary. He's talking about Larry. Yeah, he would be in your next. I'm telling you, I think he started all those guys' career, like Adam Wingard, the Ty West, all those guys. Maybe not Adam Wingard. I know Adam Wingard. I saw his first movie called Pop Skull back in the day. I don't know if that was Larry, but he was definitely in that freaking mumble gore circle. You know what mumble gore is? Isn't that like a thing? Like Greta Gerwig was part of it, right? No, she was and... part of mumble core. Well, I guess she was mumble gore too because she was in um, House of the Devil. It was like mumble core is like those. It was in the mid 2000s. All these like the indie scene were doing like these like straight like natural talking scenes right not really like waiting for the other actor to finish their lines they just talk over each other felt more natural like very natural so they called it mumble because it like a lot of the times you wouldn't fucking understand like the meme is you don't understand what they're saying because everyone's talking all over it. they're trying to do like so it's in like production like sound and shit. yeah no no adr shit like that but so um from that came mumble gore <clears throat> in the also, I think in maybe in the mid 2000s, but the later mid 2000s, right? And that's when the Adam Wingards and the Ty West and all these people were making 
sort of the the beginnings of that A24 style, very character driven, more, you know, more about the acting, more about the atmosphere, but they still have gore and stuff. There's a special, special thing that I don't, I don't know what to call it because it's not indie horror anymore, which is great, but it's, it's, it's its own thing. And I love it. Hmm. And I think uh, Larry, Larry was uh, in many ways, the, the start of that. And I think, a lot of people do give him cred, like almost like um, industry cred. Again, like Martin Scorsese casted him twice, one in 1999 when he did his New York movie, and again casted him in this his last movie. I think that's you know he knows who he is. He knows what he what he did for the indie scene and how much he's uh, helped out New York filmmakers and shit. He's awesome. I love him. But I got to say, I was pretty upset last night uh, at what was going on on Max's panel because... Oh, my God. Why? No, Well, because you... Well, you, you got to know... be upset with... Oh, yeah. Well, so. here's the thing. Uh, I, what, I, what I saw was concentrated hatred against hmm. Harold and the Purple Crayon. No, you're reading be because, it wrong. No, because people were voting for things that they weren't into. Like, there were people going like... Well, I wasn't yeah, yeah. gonna vote for X Men, but I gotta vote for X Men to make because sure they were they get. would say because <clears throat> they would say that we were voting for things we weren't interested in because we were going for Harold. Yeah, I, like we had we were part of the meme crew. You see, it was like it was like see, you got caught up in the meme. The meme it was crew. like we don't yeah. like your we don't like the thing that you're interested in, so we're gonna vote for something we're yeah, less. That was my argument. In. It's like even if we're memeing. It's still something Joe likes, and we've definitely have voted for things based on other people's. Interest. We're happy Joe gets his. You know, we've done that before. You know, I try to use the example of like if a filmmaker that you guys never heard of that I love died, and I wanted to give him props, you'd probably vote for him too. It's like, yeah, let's celebrate this filmmaker. Like, there's no. I, I, I don't even. So even I if don't we even, were memeing. I don't even know. I wasn't. There's no memeing. No, 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 no. I, not you. Not you. Not you specifically, but. Me, I'm just saying, like the, the, the if you ask me what the best thing I saw last week was, I saw the Acolyte trailer. I saw the tra I saw all the same stuff. The best thing I saw was Harold and the Purple Crayon. I'm genuine, and in fact, I'd say that is the kind of movie that gets me super excited because it wasn't on my radar. You know, we all know Star yeah. Wars. We all know Marvel. We know DC. There's certain things we expect. We're like, oh yeah, there's gonna be another Star Wars movie. It's gonna be another Ghostbusters movie, and we may love those things. But when something, and it's the same thing with the Late Night with the Devil. This was not something, if you asked me a couple months ago, what movies are you most excited for in 2024? I would not have said Late Night with the Devil because I hadn't heard of it. And yeah. when something comes up that you're not expecting and you see it and you're like, that's something unique that I didn't even know was coming down the pike and I'm excited now. Yeah. Those are my favorite kinds of things. Sure. So Yeah, for the most I, part, me too. It's like, uh, it's for me, I get most excited when I hear uh, certain festivals are coming up later on in the year. I was like, okay, that's where now I'm going to know where the new hotness is coming from. And that's where Late Night of the Devil, that's that was last year's, was making its run to festivals. I remember doing I, I didn't hear about it. I didn't hear about yeah. it until this week. When Gotta they... watch my streams. I talked about it. I said, this <sighs> one's doing well over there. Got some mixed reviews somewhere, uh, I think in Toronto, but seems like seems like it's doing well again. Yeah. Oh, man, uh, it's great. You know you know the box office for the late night of the devil made how much it made this weekend. Remember, it was like very limited uh, release. Mm -hmm. It made get six hundred and sixty six thousand dollars. That's awesome. Yeah, what a meme. Yeah, what a meme. It's wild. Shit, that's gonna be the top story of next Saturday. Six hundred, uh, and that's a movie that was made by Shutter. To be a yeah. streaming movie. No, so it wasn't made by Shrud. I think. Uh, oh, did they just pick it up? Yeah, I think. The, the their names at the beginning. It comes up, you know, Shutter presents and you get the like the Shutter heartbeat, you know, boom, 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 boom. Okay. Like, maybe it starts maybe they that. put it, but I, I don't know why they would wait so long. They put it in festivals and then waited. Oh, maybe it's like A24. A24 didn't make uh, talk to me, but they picked it up. Yeah. Oh, hang, hang on a second. Max is calling me. Uh, I'm just going to put myself on mute for a couple minutes. Oh, no. Oh. Dude, you oh. got to unmute. I'm kidding. Either Max or Damn. Either watching this too. Max was watching us. Yeah, if I was there, yeah, if if a certain someone was there, 
We could Harold and the Pearl of Crab could have been number one. I wonder who, who could have been. I wonder who could have been with the extra vote. We could have got Brian in there. No, I agree talking. with Joe. I See, think I thought, even I, if I, I was memeing, and all of us were memeing, it's still something Joe generally wanted and was excited for. I think I and think to see thought, that much hatred against it. Sickening. I thought people, I thought, I thought people were like, it's we sickening. Like, oh. I thought people was like, okay, you're you're fucking you're fucking around. Okay, no, we're not taking this serious. I mean, it, it's a neat trailer. I'm telling you, the porcupine. Porcupine's a villain. I think it's going to get... I think that's the movie that's going to get the Oscars to reconsider stunts in categories. Because of that toy shop scene with the grandma in the helicopter. That's what I think, senior nerd. Uh, that porcupine is going to be... They could compare it to Heath Ledger's Joker. <laughs> yes. Face. You think I'm it's sorry, the villain? It, it, it was literally, literally, as they're in the cartoon. You world, don't see her Harold, anywhere else. Yeah, I don't. No, I don't. Seriously, there. Harold opened the door in in the cartoon world, and then she's like in like a top of the horse, rubbing her hands like this, like yes, Harold, open the door. You yes, don't think oh. you don't think she gets okay? Okay, I know how they're gonna do it. <laughs> okay, this is how you do it, because you need a you need a you need twists and turn in your movie. So she's going to come out. They're going to make it seem like she was kidnapped. Right? We got to get her. And that's why that gives urgency to characters. We got to get yeah. her. She was just kidnapped. Where is she? Yeah. And then later on, the twist is revealed. No, I wasn't kidnapped. I'm actually working with the bad guys. If that, they do that, that at all. What do you think? I think, yeah. I guess, yeah, I mean, yeah. Now yeah, that yeah, works? Yeah. That she's kidnapped? She's not going to just turn bad. I mean, is she bad in the show? I don't know the show. I don't, I don't know. I don't read the book. Maybe yeah, she's we were, like she's a bunch of people that had never watched the show talking about maybe it. So irresponsible. I said I read the book. Maybe she's like she's sick of because a woman. It, she's sick of living the cartoon world and yeah. want to get out and make a deal with some, maybe the um the fly of the conquerors guy. Maybe he's he she's working for him. I don't. But I'm telling you, she was like she was giving this look and she's rubbing her hands together as like. Oh, that porcupine. We're not supposed porcupine. to realize she's the bad guy. Hey, you discovered uh, it too soon. And literally, literally the word is see the black guy is the horse. I swear Where's, to God, if Joe comes in here and is like, I gotta go. I'm gonna I'm gonna be I'm gonna get conspiratorial. I'm gonna get yeah. conspiratorial. <laughs> Look at that poster. Dude, I'm not gonna even attempt to listen to you until you change that freaking avatar that thing looks disgusting oh my god the front okay. cheese the first one looks like it's a, like an arm flexing i don't like it like in the front that cheese the little cheese dot or whatever splotch looks like an arm flexing and it's i don't a, like it cheeseman i don't like it looks it. like it's like a art ai art yeah it looks like ai art we're against AR. Uh, no, that, well, we're against AR. That's the actual. That's we're against AR art. That, that's the actual stuff you could you could order that in KFC. Did you see Roadhouse yet, senior nerd? No, yeah, because we're here now. Damn it, dude! But what can I so do I with you? You haven't seen Roadhouse. No, because I. Did you I, see well, when evil works? Have, when evil works. Yes. Oh, what's that? It's the horror movie. Okay, which one is that? The one from South America, I think. When evil No. There are people. Why aren't you watching the movies? I did I What's your favorite Doug Lyman movie? Go. I saw this. Don't say yeah. Edge of Tomorrow. Oh, damn. Well, then. Uh, well, hmm. let me see the list. Hold on. If I can say Edge of Tomorrow. Uh, keep going. Let me see. Jumper. Admit it. Jumper. Let me see Jumper. Getting in. Admit it. Getting in. No, let me see Getting in. 
Uh, fair game. Admit it. Fair game. Not fair game. Hold on. Swingers. Hold on. Chaos walking. I guess. Uh, I guess if I can pick HMR Boy Identity. All right. Not American Made. What's American Made? What's that? It's the one with Tom Cruise where he's like a drug guy or something. He oh. Doug, I didn't know Doug Lyman made that. I own that on digital. I've never watched it. Yeah. Doug Lyman did that. Oh, yeah, God, Doug Lyman has uh, oh, chaos, different movies. What? Yeah. Edge of chaos, Tomorrow. You know, we were just talking about swingers tonight at dinner. My, my wife and I were like, we were teasing my 16 year old about like old slang we used to use back in the 90s. And we we're like, oh, yeah, you can say this. And you, the kids at school think you're cool. Tell them, tell them their money. Go be like, yo, your money, dude. <laughs> and now yeah. look at your avatar. I never heard it till Purple Crayon until last night. Now look at my what avatar. Look, you got purple all over you. He always, look at you. He's always had the avatar. You never notice. No, I have. I guess I haven't. Remember the song "Do I, You Want to Date My Avatar" by Felicia Day? No. Do you want to date my avatar? What did Max call you for? Oh, uh, I texted him earlier to ask if he was free, and he was like, "No, I'm at dinner. I want to do a music video reaction with him because we were doing it. What happened to Senior Nerd? I scared that him happens." Away. Uh, no, we, we sometimes were, he's uh, so ashamed of the lack of movies he sees that he just leaves randomly and they'll show up again. It's we were doing to we were doing a, a panel the other day and I mentioned uh, I started like doing the lyrics from fish heads, fish heads, fish heads, really pulley fish heads. I do deep like, blue sea all the time. Deepest blue is to my head is like a shark's fin. Well, he was like, what's Man-made that? Terror. He's like, what's that? I go, you never heard fish heads? And he's like, no. And I'm like, oh, well, we got your next video reaction. That's gonna blow his mind. He's not gonna know what to think when he sees fish heads. Hell yeah! Mad made terror, hungry jaws of death. You never did. You like Deep Blue Sea? Everyone loves Deep Blue Sea. Uh, I like Hello, Deep Blue, I, Anthony Beltry. I like Deep Blue Sea, but I gotta <laughs> tell you, Chaos Walking was a big piece of shit. Oh, Ooh, I saw that in the theater. Shots fired. I saw that in the theater. It's awful. Have you seen Daisy that? Daisy taking strays. No, this Daisy, movie. Okay, if I remember, I'm taking strays. Was this movie created? Okay, did Daisy Ripley made this right after Force Ray Awakens? Ray and Spider Man take yeah, well, it was a crazy movie, joke. And it's, and this movie came out like it's it sat on the shelf for a while because of the pandemic. It was one of those movies that like it huh. kept getting pushed back because of the pandemic, but it came out. Nobody went to see it. I mean, of course, theater attendance was down across the board in twenty. Wasn't this thing like shelved for like years? Yeah, uh, it's not good at all. It's and look, I like Tom Holland. I like Daisy Ridley. I like Doug Lyman. I like everyone involved yeah. in this movie. Yeah, Doug Lyman has bad. such a resume. Look at this. <laughs> well, okay, okay. Dude, his movies are so right different. Like, like he doesn't. I, like I love Go. Who I doesn't? Go I think that's my so favorite much. of his. Yeah. I think Go might be my favorite of his. That's like this. Is, this is like a nineties. This is like a super nineties poster. Yeah, it's super nice. It's nineteen ninety nine, dude. This movie ended the nineties. It wasn't movie, Millennium. It was that movie Go. felt like. Uh, hey, let's do Pulp Fiction for young people. Like that's yeah. what Go felt that's like. How and, but, it, but it worked. It wasn't like not not in a cheesy no, way. It wasn't it, it, like when most people think of Quentin Tarantino ripoffs, they think of violence and gangsters talking about fucking CDs and movies. But like, go pay tribute to Tarantino with the fragmented story storyline and how go, the intersection thing. Well, was, it's not so much Tarantino so much as Pulp Fiction, honestly. Right. Like, go was also the movie that gave us the song um, "Feel you My Sunshine." My sunshine. <laughs> and no doubt, don't let it go away. That one song. I That's love that it. movie. I gotta watch that again. <laughs> yeah, Go's an amazing movie. Jumper. I think this movie got fucking trashed i think it's good i have so much fun with this movie you know what that was that was post star wars hating christensen backlash like at yeah, that time like, people just hated hating christensen hated so much derangement yeah. syndrome yeah yeah no i thought it was good dude i remember i didn't see it in the theaters i like i rented it i think and then i bought oh. it i was like screw it this shit's awesome I how, like the weird is it? how weird is it that at that time in 2008 if you mentioned hating Christensen, it was like nerd rage. People just had such hatred for the man. And now it's like he shows up on Obi-Wan or Ahsoka and people go nuts. They're like, yeah, Hayden's back. Because they grew up with him. No, I think because people realize how unfair. Yeah. His, like, it was his fault with the prequels. I mean, it was well, George Lucas. Wait, look what's well, happening I, I always now. say, if you watch the prequel trilogy, if you watch uh, Attack of the Clones, and if you watch Revenge of the Sith, Hayden Christensen gives an awful performance in those movies, but so does Ewan McGregor, 
and so does Natalie Portman. And Ewan we McGregor know they, is charming, at least. We know they can both act because I think both of them have at least gotten Oscar nominations. They're both talented actors. The problem is Ewan McGregor um, got nominated. I think so. For what? I think I, I mean Maybe I know Ghost Natalie Rider? Portman. I know Natalie Portman has. No. Wait. You and McGregor yeah, Black Swan. Ghost Rider. Me, uh, but uh, no, no, I'll not be... it's another ghost, it's a Polanski one. Um let me see. Yeah, but like he's Kristen Stewart was in jumper. I don't remember that. Holy shit. Yo, Kristen Stewart. Absolutely, did. dude. You gotta see Joe. You gotta see Love Lies Bleeding Remember, uh, in the theater. Well, it's in the theater. That shit is yeah. fire, dude. The second yeah. half is like the wildest second half to like a, a crime drama. <laughs> um, oh my excuse god, me. He, he, has, he has not been nominated for Oscars, but yeah. he's been nominated for Golden Globes for M Moulin Rouge, yeah, Salmon Fishing yeah. in Yemen, Moulin Fargo, and Halston. Wow, yeah. wow, I love Moulin Rouge, he'll get there. Internet loves you and McGregor. I'll, I'll say this, Kristen Stewart. Um, Kristen Stewart is one of those people. That's how you can tell uh, film fanatics, people who really love movies, from the people who only follow pop culture headlines. Because th there's two schools of thoughts on Kristen, uh, Kristen Stewart. She's made so many indie movies over the last few years, and she's become kind of an indie darling. And she has been called by a lot of professional critics one of the greatest actor actresses of her generation. Yeah. But there's another group that has not seen any of those movies and yep. only know her as that girl from Twilight. And those people think she's terrible. And they call her Blinky that, Blink. Yeah. The, the that's what she, she thing just blinks her way through. It's like, bro, you guys got gotta see. Okay, she might do blinky blink shit in personal shopper, but whole like she, I didn't even think Kristen Stewart once in Love Lies Bleeding. Like she is another person in that movie. Like she didn't do any of those standard. My girl, that's not that might not be true because my girlfriend did say, oh, she did the open mouth thing that she's known for. But it's like I didn't, I didn't notice that. I thought she was good as Joan Jett. Yeah. In the um, what was that movie? Um, the, the 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 one where she played Joan Jett. What was what's the, the Michael Shannon was in it? Uh, Runaways. I know he's about the Runaways. Runaways. Yeah. yeah. Was it like the open mouth? She shit? did a mueca, like the. Oh, the, oh, okay. I thought it was the. No, no, no. She did. Confirmed. Like that, it's not the open it's mouth like thing. This oh, is it? Is it this thing? Is she does this. Wait. Look at Senior Nerd. Confirm if this is the move. Go do it. Yeah, is this shit like that? It's very <laughs> close to that. Very close to that. All right. No, I thought she did amazing, man. I want a nomination for her, man, but I'm I'm worried that it's gonna get mixed up with because it seems like this movie got marketed when all the other Oscar movies were getting marketed. So it's gonna seem it's gonna feel like it's a last year movie when the Oscars come around next year. But holy shit, does she deserve a nomination? She was amazing. I loved her character too. Especially towards the end, man. Damn. Chris, like, she needs to do an action movie. Yeah. Like, she plays intensity so well. I loved it. I hope it's in, I hope you see it soon. And let me know what you think. It's going to be a weird one, though, Joe. Letting you know now. That shit gets weird. It gets weird. It gets weird. Oh, Robert nice Pattinson mom. has been in a lot of indie movies over the year. Yeah. Yo, oh, one of the God. most baller things, he embraced memes. Robert Pattinson, I can remember in 2008 when he was in the highlight of the whole Twilight shit, right? might have been earlier in 2008. But, like, I remember there was a couple of film communities I was involved, involved in that were like, we need to get David Cronenberg to do the last two Twilight movies because everyone knew about what happened in the books <laughs> of the last. And they're like, dude, that's David Cronenberg. We need to get him in that, right? And I think Robert Pattinson might have even said in an interview when asked, who would you like to see direct the last one? He might have said Cronenberg at one point. But even if that's not, even if that didn't happen, the movie he did right after those Twilight movies was with David Cronenberg, his fucking limousine movie. Fucking based. Fucking based. And, I was, and that's, that's when I was like, oh, this guy, this guy is not the Twilight guy. I mean, you no know, no one is their parts, but like when you start seeing it in fruition, you're I like, remember oh, critics were so harsh of our past in, in the Twilight years. Even like the movie he made, what's the movie where he died in 9 11? What's the, my my girlfriend saw that one? The Edward Pattinson, Pattinson 9 11 movie? 
remember me remember me remember me. yes yeah. oh my god people off, like, literally like what was it the year 2001 and yeah. so i immediately was like oh shit 9-11 <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, oh shit, 9 11. I mean, when 9 11 you know enters the chat, you know it's over. I was thinking about uh, our conversation about memes and meme culture the other day. Sure. And and it occurs to me that maybe we're talking about two different things. I think so. I don't think, uh, yeah. because I don't think you're I, talking about meme culture, honestly. I kind of see it as okay, I feel like the internet as a whole has a group think. And the internet makes a decision about something. And once something becomes part of the online narrative, it's almost like, I would say, almost like the emperor has, uh, the emperor's new clothes, where um, nobody wants to be the one to say, hey, that's wrong. They want to say, you, you know, the attitude is sort of like, oh, no, I can't. Um, I'll give you some some uh, extreme example, like The Last Jedi. Uh, you know, oh, the internet's making fun of The Last Jedi. So that's the thing to do. That's what we're doing now. We're making fun of the last Jedi. Yeah, they and, and fly now. What's that? They fly now was like it, everyone had to say that fucking line. It's like, bro, right? It, it's crazy. almost like it's almost like, it, and it doesn't matter what. Yeah, it doesn't matter the reality of the situation is. I'll give you an example. Somehow, you guys really think they fly more. now is a terrible line? It's like, well, well, it breaks the law. It's like, bro, you guys are using it as a meme. Like, well, I'll like, give you, I'll give you a perfect example. Work. A perfect example, and this is going back twenty years actually. But a perfect example is uh, Ben Affleck's Daredevil movie. That movie, if you ask people today, they will talk about what a disaster that movie was. That movie was a box office bomb. That movie was a horrible failure for Ben Affleck. The movie was a hit. It yeah. was a hit. They made a spinoff based on it, and they actually greenlit a sequel that only did not happen because Ben Affleck backed out of it. Um, it actually got good critical reviews. Roger Ebert called it the best superhero movie he had ever seen at that time. But the <laughs> internet suddenly turned on Ben Affleck. It was like during his is the J Lo thing. Somehow, for some reason, the internet didn't like the idea of him dating J Lo. I don't care who he dates, quite frankly. But that. Oh. Sort of me, and then yeah. G Lee came out, and then there was this anti Ben Affleck. I, care. I only want him dating Matt Damon. <laughs> there was this backlash though, towards Affleck, and suddenly the internet, um, the the perception became, well, that movie was a failure, and to this day, that yeah. misinformation is still perpetrated. Yeah. Yes. It's, well, uh, another I mean, another, I mean, another I mean, one. It's I mean, Fox, the Fox Network. People okay. used to say, "Oh, Fox, uh, the Fox cancels sci-fi shows. Uh, if you put a sci-fi show on Fox, it's going to get canceled." Well, that comes because they canceled one sci-fi show, Firefly. Firefly, Firefly got canceled. Now it seemed like they Fox, were doing Firefly dirty from the very beginning, right? They didn't even air the pilot. They aired like the I didn't even, right, I right. Didn't even so, notice. I never noticed. Um, I don't remember seeing a. A promo for Firefly. Like they were already after Firefly. It's and, not like a, that's their Fox. thing. That's their that's their studio model. Cancel, cancel. But, but if you take a look at what happened after Firefly, for years that perception was out there. They're like, oh, there's a new sci-fi show. It's on Fox. Oh, it's going to get canceled. And that was a thing. And if you look at what really happened, there was the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Mm -hmm. And the Sarah Connor Chronicles lasted two seasons. And mm -hmm. it was not doing well in the ratings. And Fox moved nights and they moved it around on the schedule and they said, let's try it here. Let's try it here. And then despite the low ratings that would have justified a cancellation, they said, no, no, you know what? We're going to try to make it work. And they brought it back for a second season. Again, they put it on a different night. They said, let's see if it works here. Same thing happened the next year with Joss Whedon's Dollhouse. Not a huge hit, but they moved it around. They tried to find a space for it. So yeah. they tried hard to make those two shows work. And the ratings weren't there no matter what they did. Sure. So after two seasons, both shows got canceled. Another network wouldn't have given those shows a second season. And then you had Fringe, which lasted for five seasons despite middle-of-the-road ratings. They kept going, oh, we'll work with it. We'll put it, we'll move it around. We'll find a spot for it. it lasted five years. So the truth is, Fox was one of the most sci-fi friendly networks there was. But the internet would tell you if a sci-fi show went to Fox, it was going to get canceled. That damn internet again. What was that um, spin off of the Why is the whole please? internet acting like 4chan all of a sudden? What the what hell? Was the, what was the 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 the, the X-Files spin-off with three conspiracy guys? The Lone Gunman. The Lone Gunman. And that was yeah. I really enjoyed that. Holy and shit, it can, I think that, that last When did that come right? out? 
2002. Wow. I yeah. barely remember yeah. it. I just remember and, the um, name. But the thing wow. was, the show got canceled. And so they did an episode in the X-Files, the, I think the Folly season, where the the lone gunman made an appearance and they, they, they killed them off. They died from radiation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If I remember, yeah, I remember correctly. They, they canceled the, the lone gunman. And so they did like a set. It was pretty much a season for, uh, a series for now, a way to write the guys off because they, they came from the X-Files. Oh, one. It was 01. They were on 13 episodes in, in, in 01. Wow. And What's there was that? another... That's where there, Remember Me takes place. There was another show that was uh, tangentially related to the X-Files, too. It wasn't an exact spinoff, but there was a show called Millennium. I remember uh, Millennium Lance, with Lance, Lance, Henry, Henry. Lance Henriksen. And it took place in the same world as the X-Files. In fact, after Millennium got canceled, they wrapped up some of that show's storylines on an episode of the X-Files. I wish they had another show, show called Falcon. And that's how they finish it. Millennium Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Did you um? Did you ask Max if he's going on? He's thinking. He's, he's thinking about it. He doesn't know. He's kind of tired. Oh, okay. We might be the only show tonight. Yeah, I'm actually well, not going to stay on too long because I got to sleep tonight. Because I'm back. I'm back to day shift uh, after after three or four months on night shift. I'm back to days starting tomorrow morning. All right. Yeah, I'll probably end it then. I wanted to talk about Larry. See what we're we talking see about. If, what? We're talking about Urkel save Santa. I see we're looking at oh. Urkel. Oh, that's my watch list. Yeah, I saw this. I didn't know this. This came out last year, apparently. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm on, I'm on Warner it. Brothers. Did do, who did the voice? Jillian White. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I'll watch this. I'm on Warner there, Brothers. Um, I love uh, Family Matters back in the distro. Day. They send me like all their like press releases, so I saw this when it came out, and I was like, "What the heck?" Yeah, I didn't know this. I didn't know this at all. It came out of nowhere. Oh, CGH, because he said I'm ending the stream. He decided, "Oh no, it's we like, can't it, have it's, that. Um, Reginald, we can't have that." Yeah. Is a original say? Is he here? Isn't it? Reginald I don't. The... I don't think he's in it. I don't think any of the characters are in it except Durkle. Oh. Okay. You so know Lisa's it. not I in got, it? I got to talk about my channel. And now oh. I'm dead is. Yo, what's up? <laughs> what's up, Degrassi? Long time. Remember, remember the early, the, the later season of Family of Family Match where it became like two sci fi because of Steve Urkel and his inventions? The, the later season of Family Match, they did a sketch in, in Kill Peel, uh, you know, with Jordan Peel as um, the guy who played Carl Winslow. Got so angry about how like it became like kind of like a, a, a wacky sci-fi sh- show because of C. Virgo's inventions. Yeah, you know, like he created a time machine. The, yeah, he created the Stefan. Cha- yeah, the yeah the the portal the the, the change loves Stefan every the change the change Stefan Urkel. Dude, I modeled yeah. my middle school life like Stefan Urkel. And I got you know picked on for it. Do you know what's a bummer? I, you know, every once in a while I make a, a, a video, and it's always the videos I'm most excited about, the ones I'm most in, uh, the, that I personally am the am the most invested in that nobody watches. Yeah, that's how um, it works. Yeah, I, I, I posted a video to the Crazy done. Joe Adventures channel today called uh, "Dave Has the Receipts," a video 25 years in the making. I put it out on all my um, social media. Hey, if you are subscribed to my channel, if you don't watch all my videos, watch this one. Just watch this one. Because I don't think you will ever see a video that displays the weirdness Mm -hmm. of my um, long, long, long friendship with Mr. Dave Perillo uh, like this video does. This video, my buddy Dave, my, 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 my best friend in the world, um, for years and years and years, he, he, he comes to my, he calls me the other day. He says, I'm coming to your house. I have to make a delivery. I don't know what he's delivering. I kind of assumed it was a birthday present because my birthday was last week. Uh, it was not a birthday present. And I don't know that I want to give away what he brought me because I don't want to, you know, pull the rug out from under the video, but I was, it, it, it was so weird and so funny and so bizarre. And I'm like, this just sums up our friendship. Like, uh, like what, what you did just transpired here just sums up how weird our friendship is. 
because he waited like he basically waited 25 years to pull something uh, on me. <laughs> hmm, at least you're getting views on your channel. Not really. <laughs> well, compared to mine. Hey. Mine's basically just a corpse being dragged. That's oh, right. Degrassi, Degrassi. His favorite subject. Degrassi says superstar artist Dave Perillo. Love his work. Yes, Dave, Dave Perillo, the superstar artist. Yeah. Who is that? He's my he's my friend. Yeah, yeah. Google well, but Dave, is he a name? Like it does well, sound Google, familiar. Google Dave Perillo art. He's a he's a he's an artist. He's an illustrator. Deepest, bluest. My hat is like a shark's fin. Um, yeah. Dave Perillo. Not Dave Chappello. No. P-E-R. P-E-R. I-L-L-O. I-L-L-O. Dave Chaparelli? If, you, if you've watched any of my videos, then you, you, you've you seen him because he's he does a lot of videos with yeah. me. Oh, yeah. I love his art style. You, you, you okay. know what sucks is... I feel like no one has the heart to tell me that my channel is dead either. God. What, is that? <laughs> what, what are you talking about? No one had. I'm done. All right. <laughs> you know why no one had the heart to tell Bruce Willis he was dead? Do you know why, CGH? No one had why? the heart. Because he was why? dead. <laughs> <laughs> he had to figure it out for himself. <laughs> All right, next yeah. subject. Come on, not Marvel, not DC. Okay, I'll do Star Wars. Whatever. I always and leave one my open. What about the what's that? Uh, the one with Harvey Biden. I I recognize that poster. No, no, no Harvey. Uh, Tony about Tony Banderas. Tony Banderas. Yeah. Right what's what, what's the, the giant A one? Pedro Amador. What's the one with the oh, giant? Oh, yeah. My mom keeps telling me to watch that one. Click the one with the giant A. The one with the giant A. Advantageous. That's sci-fi by Jennifer What's Pang. About? In the near uh, future city where soaring opulence overshadows economic hardship, Gwen and her daughter Jules do all they can to hold on to their joy despite the instability surfacing in their world. It's like a sci-fi drama, bro. I'm telling you, sci-fi has gone like fucking... Super Academy Award chic. If you have will. you seen, have you seen this uh, uh, another Earth? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's so, the one where they find out there's another Earth and people live exactly like them in the other Earth until the girl wants to live in the other Earth because she thinks her life will be better in the other Earth. Earth. That's right. I haven't seen it. You're mute. You need to, you, Joe, you well, need I haven't to. seen it. You're muted, crazy Joe, and we're sick of it. You're like, ah, bah, bah, bah. Yeah, there I don't. Go. I don't remember that movie. Like, I, I know I watched it. I think I even liked it. Another Earth, yeah. I don't anything about it? It played a when I did some festival stuff. It was playing the festivals I was in. Another Earth. Yeah, and she wants to go out to the other. Yeah, this is when I did play Dead. Yeah, I definitely saw it. It, there, you know, there's a really weird sci-fi movie I saw, um, and it's brilliant. It, it was it's done on a shoestring budget. All takes mm -hmm. place in a single room, mm -hmm. um, called Eleven Minutes Ago. And uh, God, I, I I love this movie. It, it's so good. But I, I think it's the number eleven. I don't know if it's going to come up if you type in eleven. But the problem is, uh, I don't know that you can watch it anywhere. Two thousand seven. Uh, yeah. I own the DVD, but I don't even think they sell the DVD anymore. I bought it on Amazon. Uh, it, it basically it's a time traveler. Someone goes, said Tenet, but with no money. <laughs> um, it's much better than than Tenet. I'll tell you that. Uh, it, this time traveler mm. goes back in time, and he ends up at a wedding, and he's there at the at the ending of the wedding, but he finds out that he's been there the whole night, and he's like, mm -hmm. what, do you, "What do you mean? What do you mean I've been here the whole night?" and a woman answers his question and he doesn't know what his question was. She's like, I've thought about your question. Here's my answer. And he's like, well, what was the question? So it takes him six months every time he travels through time and he can only stay in a time period for 11 minutes. 
So he, after 11 minutes, goes back to his time, spends six months fixing the time machine so he can make another jump. And he goes 11 minutes prior mm-hmm. to the first 11 minutes. And basically, we watch this whole night play out in reverse. And for him, years pass because it's six minutes between each 11-minute segment. Mm-hmm. And he he goes backwards through the night. And uh, like when the characters in, at the wedding meet him, it's the end of his journey. Yeah. And but it's but it's the beginning. For, it's it's so good. And in one room, it's, it's in awesome. a wedding. Yeah, I love this movie. I wish it was available so more people could see it. It seems like you could get it on Amazon, but a disc, which is yeah. Oh, that's how I got it. That's how I, I got just it. watched the I... Night of the Hunter early off. Yeah, I love that movie. Yeah, it slaps. I love the I love the freaking badass grandma <laughs> protecting the kids. That's one of my favorite shots. I love how oh, man. How's the the villain song leading leading like that stuck in my head? That guy singing that song and the grandma hearing it. I love that. I love that scene specifically. Yeah, that's a phenomenal movie. Phenomenal movie. This one sounds good too. Actually, Pop recommended one that sounds kind of similar, it was, but it's done in like two minute in- increments, in fi- like the infinite two minutes. It's called Infinite Two Minutes or something. Mm. Uh, it's Japanese. Uh, it has some. Oh, God damn it! I saw it recently. Hold on. These titles. Beyond the Infinite Two Minutes. Sorry, this one. Yeah, it's done like it's done like. This guy's getting, like, in intervals of two minutes himself telling him to do weird shit. And it all, oh. it all pays off. You know, it's all done. It's done uh, in one shot, too, if I remember Did correctly. Did you ever watch this uh, short film that I'm sharing right now? No. You put it on. Excuse me. Do you mind mm-hmm. if I... Uh... Free country. Uh, What's that? Oh, nothing. Sure it's not a one-minute time machine? Huh? Damn it. (laughs) Excuse me. Do you mind if I, uh... It's a great country. Hey, I'm ready. that well it certainly isn't a one minute time machine <laughs> damn it it's my lunchbox mm. it's weird i like weird cool i'm lanes i'm james james uh, are you trying to pick me up no come on do i look that strong <laughs> are you trying to pick me up yes i'm trying to Try harder. Um, She's familiar. Harder. Coffee. Harder. Dinner. He's gonna miss the te- one minute loop. I think I get it. Right now. He's gonna run out of time. And make sweet love. Oh. And fuck our brains out. Oh, finally. I'm so sick of men who can't just ask for what they want. I want you to spank my bad little boy bottom. Come on, oh. I, I thought you'd, yeah, no, no. I want to spank you. Oh, we're going <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh, hey, you like science. Science. My five-year-old niece likes science. I have a doctorate in quantum mechanics. Oh, you like theoretical quantum mechanics regarding both our perceptions of time and how we deal with universal spatial geography. Um, yeah. Uh. What's your favorite part? The butt. We were still talking about science. Time travel. Me too. Oh, it's amazing. Scary as shit, though, right? I know. Wait, wait, wait. What? Why? Well, have you read the chapter on practical application? Of course I read the chapter on practical application. And? And I am just going to hit this little red button here. Mm-hmm. Uh, excuse me. I'm, s- I'm sorry. Who are you? What are you doing with my book? Shh. I need to read this real fast. Don't worry. This one doesn't even count. 95 pages? Fuck that. No, I haven't actually read that. I'm too busy doing instead of reading. 
doing like doing actual practical time traveling? Have, have you used that yet? I don't know. I wish. Maybe. Should be. For me? Does that creep you out? No. I'm bored, CJH. No, oh, that's actually. Only this was Wait like, for the plot the twist. Dude, Wait for the. Yeah, I've never had a man fight for me before, let alone die for me. Well, sorry, die. No, I'm I'm still here. Yeah, not you exactly, but that's the point of the chapter, right? Time travel's impossible. No, it's not impossible. I've I've done it. No, every time you've pushed that button, you've created a copy of yourself in a parallel world that exists one minute in your past. Your original body dies in the genuine or. The earlier universe. Oh. How many times? I don't know. Maybe 16? Oh my god. Ah! Help! Ah! Anybody? Oh, that's, that's nothing. Hannah. Okay. Are you? Oh my god. Oh god. Shit! Someone please help me! Oh god! It's touching me! Oh. Okay, okay, wake up now! Ah! I've killed myself 16 times. You're the bright side. It's you're the first successful multiple suicide. It's pretty cool. <laughs> hey, look. Let's go back to my place and just forget all about this stupid little murder box. Murder box? The suicide machine. Who cares? S that wasn't you, it was them. Hmm? I can't. Shit, really? Oh, my CJ, this is too long. Knowing what I know. Yeah. Um, you, lost, uh, you lost privileges after this one. Gina, too, you better thank me. For How this. much longer? What's your favorite part? Time travel. Me, too. It's amazing. <laughs> Scary is. Scary? What do you mean? <laughs> no, nothing. <laughs> I mean, it's not like this is some multi-dimensional murder box or anything, right? Huh? Damn it. Brilliant. It's amazing. Hey, yeah, I, not enough potato chip, man, CJ. No, no, no. Is it, it go on? Cute. Because it'll be funny if, like, we get, like... It was cute. I liked it. Well, she died. Like, like the guy's like, oh, my God. He, like, she died. She, her dead body. I'll give you um, another good one. Have you heard of Time Lapse? Nope. Time Lapse is a uh, 2014 movie about a uh, camera that takes a picture 24 hours in the future. Oh. And uh, wackiness ensues. Sounds like um, say cheese and this lady's in it. She's in a but, bunch of slasher. Yeah, movies. Dan Danielle Panabaker from yeah. the TV series The Flash. Yeah, she's in so many slasher movies. I think she was in Friday the 13th remake, too. Yeah, she was. She was also in Sky High, the movie mm -hmm. Sky High. Cool. Any other time paradox shit? I oh. seen, um, Homer I recommends Steins Gate, the anime. Oh, my God. I found the origins of Potato Chip Man, and we will never watch it. I already saw that. What, the origins of him? Oh, yeah, we need to see River, too. Yeah. Oh, uh, you ever seen? Uh, you seen um, Safety Not Guaranteed with the that's the um... with the director of Jurassic Park, mm -hmm. Jurassic World, Jurassic Worlds. Yeah. No. Homer has. Yeah, no, she so... liked it. What? I mean, Safety Not Guaranteed. It. I did. I loved it. Yeah, she loved it. Eh, it was all right. I thought. You ever see Book of Henry? That shit was wild. Book of Eli. Book of Eli? <laughs> How bad was it? Book of Henry was amazing. I have amazing. another trailer. How bad was it that it made, it made the controversy lose Star Wars? I have another trailer. It was Bring amazing. It Stop it. Bring it up. It was. Nope. Yes. No. It's yeah, yeah. Okay, look. No, I've seen it. How I've do you know? It. Coherence? That's a good one. Coherence. What's <laughs> insane? Yeah. Potato chip man. And it's it made him lost Star Wars. They're like they can't care. They say, nope, let's bring back AJ. JJ. AJ. AJ. JJ. Yeah. Whatever. The J's. Why did I put this in here? I'm probably not gonna watch this crazy show to be honest. What's that? Time lapse. Uh, it's, it's, Are you it's sure it's good? good? 
Are you no, sure? No, I've seen it. I've seen it. It's very good. All right, let's see what other movies this guy. <laughs> okay, this is the only movie. All right, maybe he's. The but yeah, cause, maybe he's uh, the writer type. No, we got a movie. we got a bunch of uh, really good like timey wimey movies around the same time. Time lapse was one. Coherence mm-hmm. was one. And there was I've one heard of with, Coherence. I never saw it. Uh, there was one with um, Elizabeth Moss from the the Invisible Man remake. Um, oh, I she's a, she's fantastic. Yeah, I can't remember what the a- name of Elizabeth the one she was Moss? in. Though. I'll look it up right now. Invisible Man. Oh God. Oh God, the aftermath. All right. Elizabeth mm-hmm. Moss. She was in Us, surely. She's been in a lot of good movies. High I Rise. Like get him to the Greek. I like a lot. High Rise. Okay. Okay. Who Wait, was she? Green, Green Lantern. Lantern. Emerald. She's Arisa. Yeah, Rath. it's a voice. Yeah, it's a voice. Voice cool. role. Oh, I think uh, um, yeah, Meadowland. Where is it, man? Uh, the Attic. Oh my God. Was she not in you, it? Do you do you know Joe that Get Him to the Greek is a sequel to Sarah oh, yeah. Marshall? Yep. With my boy, yeah, uh, did she do it recently? No, oh, the one I love. There it is, the one I love. This is a horror movie. No, it's a, it's like a sci-fi um, multiple universe. Oh, I like that movie. oh, Homer likes this movie too. Oh, it's with this guy, Creep. Yeah, he's Mark one of the mumble, yeah. he's one of the mumble dudes, isn't he? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he's a mumblecore. They all are. You like this one? It was good. I liked this one. Yeah, it's cool. uh, what, what what was the what was the storyline again? I, it's been so long since I've What's seen it. What's the storyline? Uh, He's asking. It's like they, they go they go to like a vacation and on this like couples retreat, like kind of they, they they go off on a retreat. I think they're trying to like re rekindle their marriage or something. Mm-hmm. I saw it a long time ago, yeah. but it gets weird. But there's oh, like the doubles of them. Yeah. Like each one of them that like finds oh. a double of the other. Like cool. Like I'll watch it. Yeah. Okay. They're trying to save their marriage. I think she's awesome. I think she's really good. Yeah. I really the, love her invisible. I was man. interested in this one. Did you see this? The square looks crazy. It's like I guess it's a I don't know. It's about an art curator. It's just the trailer was insane. You should check out the trailer when you get a chance. It's a very weird looking movie. Why do some fan films have better color grading than Hollywood movies sometimes? Um, I don't know. Can you give an example? Uh, here you go. Take it Can off. you give examples? I want to know what fan film do you think has better cinematography? And then name a Hollywood movie. And, Just see and that a modern one. Don't be mentioning no fucking 1994 shit. No, those those the are... Star Wars ones. No. no. There's oh. Uncharted. No. That was fan. That looked fan film. Either with Nathan Fillion. Yeah. Like, that's fan. It's like it was right. a fan service. It was a fan service fan film. It's like yeah, we. Yeah, but never... the color grading was better than. I dropped, a... I dropped something that... in the private chat for you. Something wonderful. Don't Several that, years that, old, but. Don't mention that R Ray Power Ranger crap with um. Uh, you see that one? The R real, the R Robocop. What the? <laughs> Yo, he's blinging out, man. Yeah, he's never been that shiny. He's so shiny, chrome. so chrome. I love it. Go, go back to the beginning. Start, start it from the, the start. so shiny, so chrome. Look at him. Try the chicken. Damn. What wait, 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 what's that? The music. It's the it's the music from Back to the Future yeah. Part 3. It's Robocop eating chicken to the theme from Back to the Future. They don't even 3. try to make it like he no, just I, I, it sounds like that. And it's, it sounds like he's saying, What the hell? Fried chicken. Dude, let me tell you, Back to the Future 3 also caused some controversy in last night's show. Let me tell you. Why? I missed that. You should have been there. 
That's my. One you of my didn't do a movies. replay. You always do a replay when you're in a show and you leave. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, you you do a replay? Them. Nah. I always replay just in case I see someone talking shit after I so leave. I you know? So never I hike alone looks better than the remake. No, it doesn't. Well, well, what was the controversy with Back to the Future? 3? No, it doesn't. Cheeseman. Dude, the one thing everyone gave the remake was how slick that shit looked. What are you nuts? Mm. What are you out of your mind? Okay, right, I'm gonna finish okay. this commercial. Sorry. Okay. Whoa! That'd be hilarious. He just slams the fucking refrigerator on the television. He just sparks everywhere. He just breaks it. And he just go and he does the meme from part two. I'm having trouble. Look to him. Right the chicken. Did you ever see the? Yeah. I did love you it, ever see so the, shiny, so did you ever, what? what? Did you ever see the Michael versus Jason Evil emerge? It's a little is, dark, uh, but the day uh, night, the day, oh, fucking Cheeseman's cheesing me off. Anyways, what was the controversy with Back to the Future? I don't 3? even know what the hell you're talking. Superman returns two words. LOL, ban me. What? Yeah, what does that even mean? What does that mean, man? Wait, are are they are they still like, salty get in here and over... tell me what that means? They're still salty over purple. Whatever. You, is that uh, what it is, so Claudia? What, yeah. So what's some controversy That's with the back to They're salty over Dude, there's purple. There's so much controversy. It's not well, even Oh, that's well, why. It's all Gucci in here. The controversy. What? Okay, I I speak to Ladia. I understand this. Superman Returns versus Back to the Future is the controversy. People picking oh, Superman too- Returns over mm. Back to the Future 3. Oh, jeez. Uh, I, I absolutely love both of those movies, but I'd have to go with Back to the Future 3 only because it's like one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah, See, I know. I, people I just can't really handle I would say for People a, just can't handle differing of opinions. You know, you, I, you know I, what, I don't. Uh, can I say what I don't like about the second one? We're gonna do a comparison, act, Cheeseman. The re, the recasting thing. What? The, recasting how they of... faked? Well, how they faked the recasting with the oh, prosthetics. Oh, Christian could come back. Yeah, and they used his prosthetics without telling. Yeah, him. that was a money thing, and that that and you know, Christian Glover was about? really. Chris Wait, Glover. Glover. You know about that? Chris Glover sued uh, Robert. Oh yeah, see, I didn't know what the fuck you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, I knew that. Why yeah. are you saying shit? I knew. Because you think because uh, CJ think you're a stupid idiot. D- CJ, is that true? Do you think I'm a stupid idiot? <laughs> the only issue, the only issue I have with Back to the Future Two, is that, uh, and at the time I thought it was funny, but in retrospect, it no, it's really not work. true. Um, they they do the thing where they put Michael J. Fox in drag, and they're like he's his own daughter, and that's mm. like, like. Guy in a I never also, knew that's what that was. This morning notification <laughs> pings for day. What? I went through of the, the tag whole, my whole life without realizing that's what that was. Michael, don't even talk about here. tags, Taladia. Don't you even talk about tags? Get in here, Taladia. Get you get in here. My my point my point though is like the whole like you know guy dress like a girl waka waka isn't that funny he's dressed like a girl it's not that Back to the Future is a comedy but it's not that kind of comedy it's not like Big Mama's House so like it felt like yeah. like in retrospect I look back and I'm like okay that was kind of weird that we had to like the reveal was just to be <laughs> like mom dad do you remember he's like yeah that was that was like. Hey, look, it's Michael J. Fox as a girl. Ha ha ha. What's up, okay. Taladia? You blew up my phone. How? Notification after notification after notifications. How do you put no, that's people liking. How many times no. I put one I put one tweet? No, you are you put up one tweet and then some other dude was arguing with you and yeah. it blew up my notifications. My phone so, broke. Wh- why Literally. didn't you put it on You're supposed to turn off? Why don't you put it on? Why don't you turn off the notifications? No, because I need, I need, um, I get email, um, what's it called? Messages from people. No, no, yeah, just I'm turn one off of them. The, just, just turn, turn off. off the Twitter notifications. Yeah, turn off Twitter notifications. 
Why did I have to do that? For for that specific, and not only what that, you, you can actually you can actually leave the conversation in the Twitter. Can I? No, I didn't they, leave the they, yes, they have they have a uh, upper option to leave the conversation. Well, it kind of that. All I can say, it blew up my phone, and then I don't know some reason my phone wasn't working. It wasn't giving me notifications. You should call that. the phone company. Don't blame me. <laughs> say my phone's not working. I understand. I, I have a popular friend, and everyone's Superman. Is here. I still can't believe Joe still thinks. I know he has like look, both, look, look at this. What are you I'm talking about, Talia? You can't believe what? The Superman Returns versus Back to the Future thing. That oh my god! Why I can't mean, you I, believe that? I, I, don't get me wrong. I love Superman Returns, but Back to the Future it, Three is wait. The Back to the Future trilogy. Those are bring, my bring, three favorite movies. So, of all look at that! Look at that! It's right there. Leave this conversation. There you go, Talia. Uh, don't be yelling at me. You <laughs> flew <laughs> when you were when you were telling that dude, I was just like, "What in the hell did I?" Because I was sleeping. As well, you should, Cheeseman. As well, you should. Yeah, just turn it on silent. That's what I do. Hey, look at this! Um, blow my shit up all the time. Look at this South know, Korean like chicken. Look at this South Korean fried chicken movie starring RoboCop. Yes, I was watching it before. Yeah. The, That's great. Industry. Doesn't it sound like I know he's not talking English, they're speaking in Korean, but it sounds like he goes, What the hell? Fried chicken. And then it sounds like he says, How do I get out of here? Come <laughs> nugget, my uh, Let me hear it. Oh, what the hell? Fried the chicken. Right. <laughs> he does say that. <laughs> what the hell? Fried chicken. All right, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. All right. Well, at least he learned how to use Twitter today. What the hell? Fried chicken. And then he said, Fried then it sounds like he says, How do I get out of here? How do I, where is that? Hala Mogonika, Chilgam Nagat Masisimida. How do I get out of here? Dude, he is saying that. <laughs> He's pointing. She's giving him direction. He is saying oh, wait, that. But would he be talking English in a Korean commercial? I don't know how like, what? Man. Sometimes, I, I, sometimes I'm watching yeah, Japanese. Yeah, because there's subtitles. I swear to God. Why yeah, I, yeah. Why? Did, yeah, they have subtitles. Sometimes in in Japanese, where they just randomly say one sentence in English, and it's just like, what? Okay, it's like a thing. It's, I don't know. I've seen that. Yeah, before. Let's go back. Was the Korean lady? Oh, I know why. I fucking know why. I know why they do this. It's so this commercial could play to other foreign markets. I I guess. That's why it says here specifically. This is a Korean version. Right. I don't know. So they have them say it in English, and then they just they, they so, just subtitle so, it Chinese, Japanese, Korean. You know what I'm saying? Look to him. He said they're beyond Miss Piggy. See, that was a shout out to Muppet. Beyond Miss Piggy. No, I think he's saying he has something else to eat. Beyond Miss Piggy. No, he, said, no, he says he has something else to eat. Play that back. This paper, this paper, this commercial looks better than the Robocop remake. Come on, man. Yeah, that's true. Right. The Robocop remake isn't that bad, actually. Beyond the big Beyond the big I don't know what he's saying. No, you know something else to eat? No, he, oh. Beyond the big Yum enough to eat. Yum Did enough. Oh, yum, yum, yum enough to eat. <laughs> yum enough to okay. eat. And that just shocked this whole family with how he said that. Look at that. It's like, what they're is he talking shocked, about? They're, they're not shocked he's stealing that their refrigerator. No, they're shocked that it's he's gonna eat it. <laughs> Look to him. Fry the chicken. What the hell fried chicken? What the hell? It's what the hell fried chicken. That's amazing. <laughs> yum enough to eat. Look to him. Fry the chicken. What the hell, frickin' chicken? What the hell, frickin' chicken? What the hell, frickin' chicken? No, what the hell, frickin' chicken? What the hell, frickin' chicken? That was great. That. Yeah, look well, at that watching. cinematography. If that's not an <laughs> award contender, I don't know what that's it is. Cinema. That's cinema. That is cinema. That is cinema. I cinema watch a whole movie of that. Remake that with Nicole Kidman and put it on AMC theaters everywhere. Look. We Some come to this place to eat fried chicken. What yeah. the hell? To yum my chicken. 
We so I don't have an AMC. Okay. You go to AMC? I never all have an AMC here. So how? It takes the whole, like, freaking popcorn maker, like Robocop takes the fridge. <laughs> how is... What, what is those Nicole Kidman AMC commercials? Because I don't have an They're AMC exactly what you just asked they were. They're Nicole Kidman AMC commercials. Have you what, seen what, them? What have else you not, do you want us to say, senior? Have Nick? you not seen a, them? I, I don't have an AMC. I don't have an AMC so, theater. So you've never actually seen one of the commercials? I mean, I see Cliss, but it's like her talking about the porn of cinema while talk while seeing the theater. It sounds hot. And then it's like here, I, I've got it. I got it right here. So basically, before every movie, AMC shows. I don't know if Perp wants to show it, but. They show this uh, video that I'm sticking in the private chat, and it's just basically something they play before the movies. And it's kind of dumb. It. It's kind of dumb because they're advertising AMC theaters in an AMC theater, so it's like you're already there. They don't really need to advertise to you. Yeah, put this in the Super Bowl, people. Yeah, but she we comes come in, to she's be like, dazzled. She's like crying, yes. feels great in a place like this. Yes, yeah. I like heartbreak. <laughs> Yo, know, that was yeah. it. Heart, heartbreak yeah. feels, heartbreak great. feels Wait, good in the playoffs. You back. you yeah. used this video for MME. Yes, I did. This was our MME. We did an MME intro. Because I'm a hardcore MME. -er. Nicole Kidman makes so much money. They all do. They all make money. Nicole Kidman's there watching Wonder Woman. She's like, I'm gonna be. She's Aquaman. getting a check right now just for Aquaman playing. Somewhere. Imagine like she goes. She the, the, she's getting a she check right now. They should have edited something. Where Literally she, like, a check. They... Everyone has checks being mailed to them right no, now. No, how about this? They should maybe per, you should. Have I know. Edit I love her. Edit in the Cole Not Kidman true. AMC commercial. She's We're watching the it. orgy scene. Cinema Queen. Her orgy scene in Eyes Wide Shut. She didn't have an orgy scene. Well, just the orgy scene, Eyes Wide Shut. She's looking. <laughs> she's, she's not looking in that. Is she watching Eyes Wide Shut? She's, uh, no, she's not in the orgy scene. That well, was she's Tom watching Cruise. The orgy scene. Tom Cruise She's does his own stunts, so he was like, yo, Kubrick, for this one, I want to be in the orgy scene. Don't no, do but she's standard. watching it. Or, or you know what? No, just... Uh, Tom Cruise does his own stunts. He does his own orgies. Or uh, Nicole Kidman watching her bad movies. What's the bad Nicole Kidman movie? What's a bad Nicole Kidman movie? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I kind of I like it, but some people would say Batman Forever. It's not a great movie, but I kind of enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, probably that one. Well, that she just has a bunch of bangers. The others, banger. Moulin Rouge, banger. The, oh, I didn't, really like, I didn't really like the others. <laughs> oh, you didn't like the others? Holy shit, dude. Yeah, I don't know, maybe I gotta watch it again. But I, I love it. Wait, wait, wait. She's, wait, she's... Great job. Damn. I know. Bewitch. She's, well, <laughs> she's watching. No, Nicole Kim is watching Bewitch. I even like the interpreter. Remember the interpreter? <laughs> oh, I even like that. What about the one. Golden Compass? I didn't see it. Separate Wives, anyone? Bombed, right? That's the remake. Um, Bewitch. She's watching Bewitch. Oh, I never saw Bewitch. The Golden Compass wasn't very well received, right? Like, uh, didn't everyone hate that one? Not uh, enough to give it the Academy Award over fucking Transformers when it came to the visual effects. That pissed me off. Oh, wow. See, I'm not, I'm not, I, I love the Oscars, but I don't know. Wait, wait. Well, so, so well, the Golden Compass was based off of books and they adapted the books as a TV show properly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about the Christmas movie? What, what, is, are you done with a thought there? That was your whole thought, CGH? He was he was doing obviously uh, obviously the, the obvious. Oh. She was in Bombshell. Did you watch Bombshell, the Fox News movie? No. I, I had mixed feelings about it because I really liked the movie. Like I thought it was really good. But then I found out the Margot Kidder character, or not Margot Kidder, Margot Robbie character, was a fictional Margot character. Um, no, it, no, it was she was, she was a fictional. She was a fictional character. So um, she was based on like three that women. All the time. One? Yeah, and that's the thing. I don't. I don't really like that when you're watching a biography or something that's a true story and they stick something fictional in it because I'm like, why do I feel the, like the I true have? Story's good enough. Why do I no, have? I think, I, I think there's a like basic oh. license to everything. Yeah, why, I think why do I feel? Women. Why do I feel I think, like I have deja vu, plus deja vu plus deja vu? I think the women. I think the women that Margot Robbie played is like three or two women in one, 
and they want to keep their secret too. Like I, I felt like we've had this conversation before, but with, I know that we with bombshell had this conversation bombshell. before with bombshell. No, this specific the way this our dialogue is going, but with bombshell. I don't know. Just what? continue the show. Hey, ignore by the way, I, every, I, I, uh, show, ignore every ag, ignore every word this, that I ever. This said. is not well, a show. Do. Do. This I is a stream. Time, I, I don't like, do well, shows. I, I, for a second time, there, yeah, for a second there, you had my uh, one of my movies up on there. Uh, one of my activities. Um, it said that you know I had just watched The Breakfast Club earlier today, and that's uh, so like I want to point out. Yeah, no, I want to point out that today. And yeah, you know, get it, get it in while you can, because you've only got a little while left into this day. But today is the day to watch the Breakfast Club because it's three twenty-four. Today is the fortieth anniversary of the day they had Saturday detention because that movie is set on March twenty-fourth, nineteen eighty-four. Is that why you saw it? Um, well, it's one of my. I love the movie, but I know. But, but yeah, I was like, day? did you see? I day? was like, yeah, I'm like, I'm gonna watch this because it right. was 40 years ago today that these kids uh, met uh, in Saturday detention, and it changed their lives forever. Is there like a an internet site or something where we could look at every month of the like someone calculated events in every movie that they possibly can to coincide with you know certain dates in reality? I don't like, know. Be so cool if I can look up like oh, like my birthday. What like movies take place in my birthday or whatever? That'd be really cool if someone created a database like that. Well, I, I told you the Locked other day every uh, day of a fictional movie. I told you the, the other day about six movies that take place on my birthday. The the Purge franchise. Every, yeah, every Purge movie is set on my birthday. Uh, let's see. Database of movie birthdays. M movie know, dates. Movie dates. <laughs> So I don't, I don't know. No, yeah, I don't even know how eight. to describe what I'm asking for. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Degrassi is there is a site like that. Yeah, I don't know how to do the search term though, because when I typed up movie dates, it's bringing up release dates. That's not what I want. Um, dates, movies take place. What movie came out on your birthday? Do you know? I don't know any movie that takes place in my birthday. That's why I want to know. No, no, the movie that came out. On you, your birthday. Do you know that my birthday? Uh, uh, movie are, that are came out. Birthday? Okay, I used to watch a bunch of dude. Nah. I, my birthday sucks when it comes to movies. No, I'm talking about a movie that came out the 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 year the month the year you were born. Oh, don't day. Oh, I gotta check that. What? Let me check. I know mine. Uh, my the uh, month. Um, um, the Princess Bride came out in April 14, 1987. That was when I was born. Or the See, weekend, I, the week, the week I was born. Out. I was born on a Sunday, so no movie opened the day I was born. Well, what well, week? <laughs> Check your birthday week. Well, hold on. Wait, let's see. I mean, I oh can check God. March 25th. No, and... please, no, please, no. No, no, what? thank God. I thought it was Police Academy. Oh my God, I was about to have a shit. That opened in 1984. I know. I want final chapter, Friday 13th. <laughs> April 13th, baby, let's go! I came on my birthday. I Friday it was, 13th, um, this is the closest one I got so far. I thought, okay, I thought it was Princess Bride, but it came out in uh, October. And Man, I it was a Robo fucking Con movie called Champions no one heard of. Movie that came... Movie Children of the Corn. Nice. Nice. Darling. My name is Maestro. Oh, CJ's back. Hello. Hello, Papa. Hello. Well, if anyone cares, my birthday is this week. Hell yeah. Happy early birthday. Thursday. How are we celebrating? 28th. How are we celebrating? I don't know. Oh. Should ask a... Uh... Hey, your mother's ass. You should ask someone to do a stream. Wow, this can't be right. According to Wikipedia, only like a handful wait, of movies. Wait, wait, wait. Who? No, no. Let's, don't. Who? Continue. Who? Could it be purple? Joe, continue, please. Uh, be, uh, purple, I mean. Yeah, according to Wikipedia. Your, your name is still purple. Oh, oh my shit. fucking... 
How do I change that? For good reasons. I want I want violence happen to you. Edit name. Perfect. Only Dude. about, according to Wikipedia, uh -huh. only about six movies were released in March of '76. That doesn't seem possible. And only no, one of them is something I've heard of. No, not, okay, no, there's there's, keep in mind, there's no DVDs. They, they keep them in theaters way longer, probably back then, right? Well, okay, I'm looking. I'm looking oh, at six um, movies a month, Joe. Box office and people Mojo, complain like, about nowadays. When we have so much content. Okay. Oh and, wait, I was on the wrong site. Here oh, we go. Never mind. <laughs> I'm wrong. Okay. The movie that came out the week of my birthday, the week I was born, um, it, it, it came out in October 10, 1987. Wait, wait. The Secret didn't Shop. We... Oh my fucking shit. No, shut up. The Secret didn't, of Success. Didn't we have a solution how to watch movies? I will punch the day? you straight in the face, TJH. <laughs> the Revenge we, of the Sith? Said, you were born when Revenge that of the Sith would, came out saying you're nerd? We, we said no. that we would have... The, an event like Comic Con, but for movies. Yeah. <laughs> this is Titanic was so in the angry. theater for over a year. Yeah. Wow. Al wow. Sorry. James Cameron. But yeah, that that All was right. my solution to movies. Uh, what? If Perp can remember it, uh, no, I that can't. we all have. Like a Comic Con type event, but for movies. So, three movies a weekend. I will nothing say this: seems, nothing seems to have opened. Is that a like, declaration. Like, nothing memorable seems to have been opened like within like the week of my birthday. Yeah. But about uh, two or three weeks later, the, uh, Hitchcock's final film, Family Plot, opened. And mm -hmm. about a month after my birthday, one of my all-time favorite directors, Joe Dante. Joe released, Dante, his, Piranha. Released, yeah, his first movie, Hollywood Boulevard, opened about a month after my birth. So there you go. Yeah, that's the, so the, week, the week of my birthday, the Secret Success, the Michael J. Fox movie. Dude, I did know that. I did know Perp Perp. And then also they came out that week, the, the re-release of the, Aristos, the Aristocrats. The Man, Aristocrats. you have a boring-ass birthday. I know. I'm looking. At I had Friday the Thirteenth for a little bit before Champions came in and fucked it all up. Goddamn Chariots of Fire, starting trends. That's what I'm assuming Champions is. Is this for oh my god? Oh, and uh, Hannah and her sister also had, had a re-release on the week of my birthday. What the hell is Hannah? Okay, yeah, isn't that Woody Allen? Isn't that Woody Allen? Oh, no. what is Sexy that? apples. Sexy Allen. Sexy Woody Allen. Sexy yeah, that's Woody, Woody Allen. Allen. Oh, then April 14th, prick up your ears. That's also... That's, the, 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 is that a porn out, movie? No, okay. Uh, biography... Because it should be. Biography John Lair is writing a book about uh, playwright Joe Arted. Joe and... Kenneth met at a me. drama school and lived together for 10 years as lover and collaborator. Both went to be writers. Only one of them is successful. So who's starting who's it? All right, guys. I'm going to end the stream. I'm hungry now. Damn yeah. It. I was hoping I could go longer, but I'm hungry. Oh, oh Gary Oldman. Uh, uh, writing Alper, a book. Alper, uh Molina. Wow. I'm writing a book. What? What? You're writing a book? Yes. 13 verse? Oh, yeah. Hannah and her blisters, am I right? Oh, my God. Oh, my oh, God. Yeah. You actually pay attention. Yeah. I do pay attention. God damn it, CJH. That's my problem. Sometimes I wish I wouldn't. <laughs> I wish I can't pay attention, but I have to. All right, guys. Um, little movie perp. Hopefully, you guys go over to Mad Max Movie Madison Entertainment. You'll find most of us there. Uh, senior nerd will be there soon. We're working no, on that. I won't. We're no, working I won't. on that. No, I'm right. bad. I'm, I love over. everyone. No, I'm done. I'm You're done. all the best. I'm done. Watch a movie. So am I. Watch Are you